Hey guys, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. Today, we're going to be revisiting an old company that we talked about back in November of last year. So that company is Stitch Fix. All right, so Stitch Fix, we made a video on, and I'll actually showcase that video here. Uh, so let me actually pull it up and uh, we can see it for ourselves. So this is the old video. It's, you know, one of the OG videos, you could say. Uh, November 17, 2021, we'll actually take a look at what the price was around then. Well, actually, we can see today's price at the time of filming that video was $33.69. And then you can kind of see what more or less was uh, <laughs> talked about. And basically, the conclusion of the entire video was it was extremely overvalued, even after its drop. And actually, I don't know if we got some interesting uh, flack for that. Uh, but yeah, let me see, because uh, it was not many comments. All right, so uh, let's take a look, of course, at um, the price action. Let's, let's take a look at the price action. So now it's at $9.88. Uh, taking a look at what happened, this is, this is what I was talking about. So at the time of filming that video, it was around here, right, where it was in the 30s. And it had just recently dropped, right, about 63%. So a lot of people are like, okay, well, it's dropped 63%. It can't go any lower. It's already dropped so much, right? Now it's a buy. Now it's time to buy. And a lot of people were, were decently bullish on this company. So if I even look back at, you know, articles perhaps written around that time, uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to find some right here for you guys. Uh, but essentially, just like focusing on some articles, Stitch Fix, a cheap fix. Uh, this unique e-commerce brand is poised to continue expanding. Stitch Fix's Act 2 could fix their income statement. Stitch Fix stock guidance pulled lower. Here's what you need to know. So things started getting more and more bearish, but absolutely hilarious articles coming out. Uh, Stitch Fix is cheap again. So you know what? Maybe I'll just show you guys uh, this, this exact thing that I'm talking about. I'll just pull it in here. So th these are some articles that were written, which, which are absolutely hilarious, right? So just take a look at how, what happens, right? Stitch Fix, future opportunity improve after temporary postal issue. Stitch Fix, flee the sinking ship. Finally, someone in there is, uh, is uh, actually, you know, talking truth there. Master quarter, but the stock is extended. All right, so this was written June, tw June 8th. And then now, but this person changed their mind, a cheap fix over here. E-commerce brand is poised to continue expanding. So a lot of like just interesting feces around on there on this area. I don't know what kind of analysis they were doing, but you know, they make money, they write articles, they're published. So that means they're credible. Uh, so anyways, regardless of that. So then we see what kind of has occurred since that video, since the publishing of that video. So around, yeah, around a 70% drop uh, from today. And today it's down another 7%. But mainly again, what we were discussing within this um, uh, video, let me actually pull this up again. What we're discussing within this video or that, or that video that I showed you guys, um, which is here, um, mainly overvalued and the price targets well, at these estimations, the thing is the estimations have probably come down. At these estimations, price target was 11 and actually it reached 11. And I, I received this comment uh, down here saying if I could talk about it again because it, it reached the, the price target. I didn't get to it until now. So I'm getting to it now. And I guarantee you that if I, I look at the analysis today, it's actually deteriorated even further. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at, you know, for example, the investor presentation. I want to also say that they, they did announce the share buybacks around January 6, 2022. Uh, let me see what price the stock was at in January 6, 2022. So January, January, January. Okay, so much higher. And then so buyback announcement has done absolutely nothing. It's down another 50%. Hopefully they are doing those buybacks because now it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> uh, obviously, but we're still looking at a billion dollar market cap and we're going to go over to the presentation and kind of get an idea of what the heck this company is saying. Like, why should I buy you? If I see a ton of pat in the back um, slides, I'm going to just not care about this company because when it's excessive, it's kind of crazy. And knowing that they're headquartered in San Francisco, I guarantee you there's, there's a decent amount. All right. So uh, UK and apparel footwear accessories. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Total market online sales. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So online penetration. I love this. So like they're, they're throwing these big numbers as if they're going to achieve that big number. Um, but anyways, um, and product third-party brands. And so they, they use these third-party brands, but basically they're like a stylist They're an online stylist company. Let's be, let's be real about what the company is. They're an online stylist company. 
Uh, they have their own Stitch Fix brands. These brands could expand. That's actually where I'd be more interested in understanding or knowing what's going on with your business. I don't care about brands. I could not care less. I say, does it look good? Does it fit on me well? Great. Cool. Give it to me. Uh, I could not care less. Like I don't care about Nike. I don't care about Adidas. I don't care about any of that. I know a lot of people do. So that's why I'm not a good investor in retail. I just, I'm not good. I don't understand it. So because I can't understand the mind of the consumer, I'm just, I would be terrible at picking a retail stock that wins, but I'm the consumer that like says, yeah, yeah. Give me your brands. I don't care. Lowest cost feels good. Fits good. I don't, I couldn't care less. All right. So uh, they have this AI technology that apparently like makes it awesome for, you know, style returns, fitting and all that jazz prop printer selling. Yeah. So that's what they're talking about. New client share of wallet, addressable market. Okay, cool. If you say your addressable markets in the hundreds of billions, I swear. Um, revenue, revenue. Okay. Revenue here. Okay. So revenue is constantly growing and we'll actually take a look whether or not that's continuing to grow. And I think even with that growth, remember in the original video, even with this growth, right? Those are the growth rates. We didn't assume it's going to stop growing. We assumed it was going to go continue to grow from that price. That was the valuations on the right-hand side after those assumptions, okay? And again, where we are now, right? So we're actually below any of these growth rates. If, if it's going to grow less. And by the way, I actually take a look over here, the buybacks. I didn't assume any share dilution. I didn't assume any buyback. I think they did dilute more than they bought back. Uh, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, financial model has proven non-gap profitability, non-gap profitability. I love it. Uh, but yeah, I want to see that cash flow. Uh, what this tells me right here, they're burning cash and then all of a sudden a capital raise of some sort, but yeah, they're burning cash and then they raised capital working capital. Okay. Working capital has been remaining steady. Total assets, assets are increasing. Good. Total liabilities also increasing, but you know, it's fine. Adjusted EBITDA reconciliation. Okay. Uh, net income. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So they, they're they losing money on a gap net income basis. Uh, it's decelerating, but then accelerated again. Cool beans. Uh, wow, that's a <laughs> that's a big quarter of loss. Yeah, 2021 is not, it's not a, okay, so they had Q2 2022, Q2 2021. So it's accelerating there. Interest income. Okay, we don't care about that. Uh, free cash flow. Cash provided by operating activities, yeah, it's negative. I don't, I, you see, your EBITDA doesn't matter to me. Okay, so you know what? I stand corrected. I have to correct myself. There was no padding on the back. Awesome. Uh, again, I don't, I don't look at these before the video, so that way, you know, the the uh, sentiment is raw. All right, so no padding on the back, great. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we'll stop with that. So taking a look at the uh, 10K here or 10Q, sorry. The 10Q, we're, we're going to be paying attention to. Let me zoom in for the our mobile viewers. Uh, cash and cash equivalents is, again, actually increasing. Awesome. Short-term investments, inventory, okay, all that jazz. Uh, let me see that debt. Show me that debt. Total current liabilities, total liabilities. Okay, so no long-term debt. Cool. So like I said, I think I mentioned in this video that the balance sheet uh, was pretty solid. No risk of bankruptcy. And they're not bankrupt but <laughs> yet. Um, but we'll see. All right. So let's actually go to the, uh, um, let's go to the cash flow statement right here. So uh, net loss or net cash provided by operating activities. Hey, there we go. We're finally cash flow positive. So we're cash flow positive right here uh, for the six months ended in January 29, 2022. So they were cash flow positive here. And awesome, finally. So they're, they're showing signs. So maybe now they're interesting. You know, that's the point of this video. Are they interesting now? Uh, let's actually, I guess, segue over into the model and kind of see for ourselves. S F I X. And we shall see. Do, 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 do. All right. So, um, yes, they are di net dilutive and let's kind of see what they've been doing. So look at that growth. It's a growth company boys. Um, Okay, so yeah, 2021 was cash flow negative, an estimation of cash flow positivity, finally. And um, yeah, we can see here. Okay, so I think now we can actually do a unprofitable analysis. Yes. Uh, and let's change this to, let's actually go back here. Uh, net cash provided by operating activities. It's about 90, was that 90 million? Yeah, 90 million. And uh, let's go back to the uh, income statement. Income statement. 
<clears throat> all right, so a 90, that's 100, so like, yeah. They're, 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 let's, let's actually come back here and let's start to say, uh, they're gonna be in, I think, uh, this year. So let's assume that they will be this year. And uh, we are going to dilute it at about 5%. Uh, growth though, growth is the, the key. And I think this definitely needs to be at a 20% for the uncertainty principle, uh, but growth is key if not profitable. Okay. So they're going to probably achieve somewhere between, uh, let's keep it at 10 for now to be a little conservative. Uh, but let's assume that we're going to assume that they continue that trend and they achieve a long-term uh, rate of about, <laughs> um, 10%. So there, we know they're achieving it right now. Okay. Is the point. Uh, so taking a look at that, I'm going to assume they continue to dilute because they need uh, they need capital and they might slow that down. Uh, the buybacks, let's actually see how much they announced, 150 million, maybe purchase up to 150 million in class A common stock. I know that there's two classes of stock. Um, yeah, it's actually shown here. Ignore this number, but it's shown here. So this and this, the difference, the delta is the other class of stock. So we're going off of this. This is the market cap of the common stock that we are purchasing, um, even though the market cap, total market cap is actually a billion. And uh, again, you can kind of see that here, a billion. So uh, furthermore, looking at this, uh, let's see, think about some growth rates here. So average growth rate of the past couple of years is 23%. So 20% is not with, out of the realm of possibility. So now the story has kind of flipped. Um, looks interesting here. Uh, again, difficult business for me to understand. The model is now kind of flipped the script here. The fundamentals, have changed and uh, i have to make these videos and then just be honest with you guys right the fundamentals here have changed right from that original video they were terrible fundamentals uh and the stock reflected that and we saw the performance but things can change right we have to be adaptable to a business now there's caveats here the growth rates are the huge caveat right if they don't achieve these growth rates if they in fact achieve lower growth rates going forward uh that would be a big concern. Okay. Of course, I am assuming this dilution. Let's assume, for example, for a second that they don't dilute. They have a net neutral dilution rate. We can kind of see here that we can assume now low growth rates. Uh, but, you know, going forward, it still, it still makes sense. And now, maybe I'm being too aggressive on this uh, profitability measure. So if I say, for example, 5%, they still look pretty cheap relative to their growth rate. Now, would I be buying this? Not, not necessarily. Um, I, think, I think, for example, this is kind of a broader sell-off, and I'd love to see how much of this uh, stock was invested by retail. Uh, what's the uh, expected growth rate? So I think um, I can probably like pull that up because, I, look, we are seeing that estimates of growth are actually continuing to go up. And I can actually pull up some other opinions and uh, give, tell you guys in just a second. So some other growth rates. Okay, so but growth rates in the future, it looks like it's projected to be about nine-ish percent. So this 20% is not very likely. I think this 10% is actually quite likely. So let's say 10% because they're achieving kind of a maturity stage. And the thing is, if you, if you really think about it, uh, the maturity stage, and we're, we're just exploring at this point, we're kind of trying to conceptualize what's going on. Um, so the maturity stage, people probably thought it was higher. And then when people realized that the maturity stage is actually at a lower base, uh, the stock sold off like crazy. Right. And so we might be in that realm where it's achieved its maturity size and we're priced in for a maturity phase. And, you know, it's kind of sad to see that this company achieved its maturity phase so quickly. Uh, but you know, it happens. And so, I think that in this realm, in the, where it currently sits, is a much better price than it was before, okay? And looking at what we have to kind of pencil out over the coming years, um, it does appear as though they, they're, you know, they're, they're not as egregiously overvalued. I, I have to be objective. And, and even though I, I said what I said back then, things change. And uh, we're, we're looking at it. Think, things have changed. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to be buying this. I might buy it just for like, uh, again, kind of like what happened to Foot Locker. Like, oh, it's sold off. The model is saying it's at decent price point now. Might just throw some money in just for fun. See what happens. Like an experiment. 
right? That that's the extent of what I would do. It's just not in my area of competence. Um, cause again, I, I, I literally guys, I don't care. I really don't care about like clothes and stuff like that. I would dress like a bum. I don't really care. Nothing wrong with dressing like a bum. I think that's a, uh, a relieved lifestyle. I, I wear, I wear, um, nice clothes because my wife makes me all right occasionally. And then that's about it. I don't really care, but stitch fix is not a service that I would use, but that doesn't mean that it's not a, a business. Other people would use my wife wouldn't use it either. She enjoys actually going and picking out her clothes and stuff like that. She doesn't like this automated service. Well, maybe this is good for me if I, if I was single and then I'm like, all right, I don't want to pick my clothes. I'll just let stitch fix, pick my clothes for me. There's also other competitors, for example, that we can talk about like trunk club. I think trunk club is owned by Nordstrom rack or sorry, not Nordstrom rack Nordstrom um and a couple others um but yeah no I, I i i think that it's it's not a business for me even though the fundamentals have changed for the better in terms of evaluation at, at the present moment um but yeah let me know what you guys think down below that's pretty much all that i'll say for for this company i forgot to mention the big risks associated with the current valuation that still are are looming and that mainly has to do with the current macro trend of the consumer spending, right? So we, we've been talking about on this channel for quite some time now. We had the liquidity crunch earlier this year, uh, which I'm really not out of, but um, so I won't really get into that per se. But more in particular, what, what is concerning is if the consumer, this is considered a discretionary service, right? Discretionary services, discretionary goods are things that the consumer, you know, with their extra income after their necessities and say, oh, I want to do that. Right. And so I have to remember, or we all have to remember, depending on your financial situation, you may be in a good financial situation. Well, not everyone is. And a lot of the uh, consumption is dependent on the consumer being in a good place. Right. And so this is a company that is highly sensitive to that. So this pricing might be that the market is telling you, hey, watch out. Um, I'm pricing in, you know, uh, slowing consumer, right? We have a very good consumer right now. Are they cash flow positive because there's a strong consumer, but under a weak consumer, will they have negative cash flows once again? So this part, and again, is the part that I would focus the most on as an investor is the risks. We focus on the risks first, and then the upside will take care of itself. So looking at Stitch Fix, this is my main point of concern. And then that's what I wanted to say here, that that's the main thing. So why would I not consider it an investment for myself per se? That, that very reason. And on top of that, it's outside of my circle of competence. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. When you identify something as outside of your circle of competence, nothing wrong with that at all. But on that note, guys, this is the actual uh, end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.